employers didn't have a way to reward workers because they couldn't wage control. You know, they, they couldn't they couldn't pay them more. So so they're looking around. Well, how, how can we reward this good guy over here? Oh well, we'll buy him health insurance. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we have this uh, evolved psychology that's designed for small group living. Mm -hmm. We transplant it into this weird modern world where mm -hmm. we have bureaucracies and other weird mm. shit that's making decisions for us. And very big. And, and very big. Yeah, and it's 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 evolutionarily unnatural. Video would be a point of blockchain. If you see Donald Trump sitting there on a live thing going, I hate Haiti, you're getting it firsthand from them. Before that, we had like news reporters. If you want to hear me get super far out on politics, <laughs> I have seen a system that works. It sounds outrageous to say. The only system I've ever seen of leadership that works pretty well, at least when I say pretty well, 10 times better than ours, is... Dualism uh, uh, resurrected here. Dr. David Buss, <laughs> former Harvard professor, University of Austin, Noel Cookman, formerly professor Zach's dad. No, still. Former, <laughs> former, still former my dad. dad. Former <laughs> Joel Salatin, <laughs> Joel Salatin <laughs> author, speaker, visionary, sustainable agriculture and a bunch of food that was decimated by a bunch of hungry people here. So pretend the camera is not here. We're, 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 I just thought, so Joel, well, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth because you're actually here, Joel. A lot of times I got to be like, you know what Joel would say? But Joel's actually here. But Joel thinks that you don't think that we can just deconstruct human life and go, if we just replicate the neurons in human brains in computers, now we've, we've created a human. Is that why? Not but, by any means. I mean, and the and the very notion that that is doable or even acceptable. Um, doable. Then they're what? totally different yeah. issues. Is, is it doable, doable or acceptable? acceptable? Big one. Uh, well, I would say neither. Well, is it doable? No. He's saying no. No. Oh, wow. Okay. No, so no, I, I think you will be proven wrong in about seventy years. We'll see. Well, but I grew up. <laughs> That's a good argument. When, whenever I can't prove myself, I know, 75 years, we'll see who's right. And when we're both dead, you'll, I'll get the last time. Give me 200 years. You know, I, you, you got to be careful about prophecies. I mean, I grew up in the 70s when I was in high school. I remember very well in science class watching movies that by the late 1980s, farmers would simply sit at a console and everything would be under a dome, environmentally controlled, and farmers would simply be punching a console and making robots do stuff. We're now, whatever, 30, 40 years past that. You know, we haven't even begun. Paul Ehrlich, I remember debating in college, and we used Paul Ehrlich all, he was this guru biologist that in the 70s was saying that by 1985, there would be no oil and and no species, the guy was a total nutcase. Right. I mean, I mean, he was gr proven grossly wrong. And so, you know, these these kind of discussions are interesting. But Maybe for me, for me I got to go home and make happy earthworms and move cows and and create compost. To, so, to, real to, shit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, it's it's almost a an irrelevant discussion to say whether in 80 years Shoot from that way what are humans going to be doing i mean we we we've, we've never we've never hit it right in the past why would we hit, be hitting we, it right we now hit it once in let's, a let's 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 instead instead of instead of wasting time on that let's talk about how this how this hotel could serve locally based sustainably grown hydrologically encouraging earthworm copulating, facilitating food. I, I knew it all boiled down to mating. <laughs> <laughs> Your benefit. It's all about mating. Copulating earthworm. Copulating earthworm. <laughs> Dr. Buss is an evolutionary psychologist <laughs> who says all of life basically boils down to reproduction and mating. <laughs> Life on Earth, and maybe everywhere, not inanimate things. Only with sexually reproducing species. Yeah, yeah. Of which we are one. Yeah, yeah. So does the same thing apply for things that are asexual, that don't have gender? Yeah, no, a asexual is a different ballgame. I mean, they, but they're not very successful.
on <laughs> average, you know, because they, because they don't produce the variation. That's yes. kind of the issue we were talking about earlier. Actually, Alex was uh, highlighting that. You know, that that's the key: is sexual reproduction reproduction produces this incredible variation, mm. and then selection can then pick the best variants from that variation. Yes. Genetic yeah. variability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, which is extremely, which is extremely, it has built-in um, protections that are extremely non-mechanical. Yes, the term, it's a, because it, it's not it robust, meaning the parameters and the environment can change, and it would still survive because there's variability. Yeah. Yeah. One core thing, though, and we're talking about this in the world view, Joel is. Christian and Alex is zero religion influences. I mean, zero thought of God or anything. So he doesn't mind reducing human thought to something. You could just break it down. If you could break it down right, enough, right, you right, could right. rebuild yeah. it in a computer. Right. Yeah. Whereas Joel thinks there's some, there's a soul that is not replaceable and somehow yes. goes through the sperm and egg to the next person. Right. That it's the spark of life. Thing. It's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. but you it's don't believe it's not here. This it just pumps blood. No, it does not. No, but you don't believe there's any yeah. soul. You don't think there's no. So let me ask you this. Just try, so I want to just play. I end up now the days playing middleman here, um, which Noel thinks I need to take a stand more and everything, <laughs> but I do have a stand. But it's more interesting. I already know my opinion, so I want to hear other people's. So <clears throat> why can't we, or will we ever be able to create life? from the first spark, if there's no, because I think Joel, that, that's like the spark. It's like, we can't take a computer. Well, I mean, I mean, we can't take something dead and make it alive. Why can't we? I mean, no, first can of, we, I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, it's already happening. Genetic splicing, we make, we take a piece of chromosome, turn it into a, into life all day. So are you saying like non-biological system, like comp completing a computer? Yes. Yeah, I just, it's a matter of understanding the complexities so of the brain. So you just think we're not, the computers aren't powerful enough. Yet. Yes, that's exactly and Once they are, once they'll they be are. able to do it. Yes. And Joel says they'll never, they won't be able to. It's an interesting bet. I think I'm going to win that bet. Bet in 75, 75 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Check yeah, back to the show in the podcast <laughs> in 75 years. We will have the, we, 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 we will see when every knee will bow and every tongue confess. There it is. We'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll see who's right. Craig uh, agrees with Joel. Yes. <laughs> hey, another question is, has any human being ever exercised free will? As, as, as differentiated from the illusion of free will. There's the illusion. That's a very, that's, that's, that is one of the most hard. fascinating. That is hard. Sam Harris wrote a book called Free Will and makes a strong point that humans have no free will. Joel, this is one that a Christian... Mm -hmm. Can take both sides because yeah, oh yeah, there's Sovereign Christians and, that are Calvinistic and free will, yeah, that say there was a whole group the Calvinists that yep. said if you're born going to hell, you going to hell, yeah, and if you're yeah. if you were ordained to be a Christian, you are. So yeah. which was before the modern age of atheism, that the Calvinism before. was before determinism. So what do you think? Let's. I want to hear from you too. Oh. Well, that was my question. I texted to Zach earlier. I was like, I gotta ask. So let's hear Dr. Dr. Buss. Question, Do you think free will... Does any human ever exercise free will? Is it real or is it an illusion? Uh, I think it's an illusion. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, this gets back to first Cartesian dualism. You know, the, the, so explain that to those of us uh, okay, that the, are not the, up to date on our current. <laughs> my Cartesian dualism must needs a little refining. I was sick that I'm day. Sure not <laughs> like I know. I watched everybody's faces. Everybody just got. Like, oh. I just eject. I just pushed the eject button. Right, I'm only up to the second <laughs> edition. This is your five minute tutorial. Yeah, on what? Explain what is Cartesian dualism? It's just uh, the notion that there are these two separate causal entities. One is the physical causal entities that Alex is talking about, and there's this other set that is not physical, that's supernatural, okay. physical, basically, that is mystical, spiritual, mm -hmm. or whatever, that we don't understand the cause. Now, of course, we don't understand a lot of the causal mechanisms involved, but uh, the notion that there are two separate essences 
in the world, um, I, I think has um, pretty much been debunked by, by modern science. So, so yes, I mean, we, we, we have a brain that's a physical system and it produces the mind. Um, and that's what we have is a physical system. So um, uh, does that rule out the possibility that there's some other physical process in the universe that we don't know about? No, it doesn't. I mean, there, there could be and probably is. Uh, but um, this notion that there are these two separate causal systems, one the physical and the other the non-physical. Cartesian dualism. Yeah, yeah that's Cartesian dualism. And so does that go against no almost more. every core religious belief? Islam, Christianity, I feel like they all Hinduism. think they're... Yeah, it, yeah, it goes against a lot of them, I, I would say. All of them. The, the major ones, base, yeah. the big three. Because, yeah. Well, well, any theistic, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Or even Hindu. Oh, well, yeah. He, he, even a, yeah. a spirit, even an, um, an animist. Right. An animist uh, belief system. So, you think, so, do you think the reason we do stuff and it appears to be free will, or we can't prove it's not free will, it's just the science isn't good enough to explain it yet, but one day it will be? Well, well no, uh, probabilistically. So, so, I mean, if you just take humans out of the equation in physics, you, it's not a totally determined exact system. It's brown and it's, motion. It, yeah, it's yeah. probabilistic. So, so yeah. Alex can explain it better than I could. Uh, but um, yeah, you, you can predict probabilistically what electrons will do, etc. Um, can you predict deterministically exactly what this electron will do under the... No, you can't. Um, but it's actually yeah. against Heisenberg's principle. Right. So you cannot know the uh, momentum yeah. and location of any particle at the same time. That's you like cannot quantum yeah, physics. Yeah, quantum right? physics. It's, like it's going to be prob probabilistic, but because we cannot reverse time, we cannot prove that it's not probabilistic. That is a problem. So free will, be, basically we can never settle this argument because we cannot go back in time and play this simulation game one more time to see if we have different outcomes. But, but so it will never be proven. Alex has a PhD okay. in... Not quantum physics, but you have a mechanical engineering. Right, right. But he knows what he's talking about. And, but I think we can all agree, I think everybody here would agree, that there is an illusion of free will. We all have the illusion that we are deciding at every moment, oh, okay, I'm going to decide to do this, I'm going to decide to forego that. So we do have the illusion of free will. Even if there's free will, we have the illusion. But, he, but here's reality. the thing. But if there is only illusion of free will, should we be sending people to prison? Let, let me take a more practical thing. Yeah, then there's no responsibility. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. See, this, that, that's, that's a fallacy. That's okay. a fallacy. Of course we, we should. Because the, the act of holding people accountable, accountable for their actions is an environmental causal force that causes people to be more accountable for their actions. Right, so you're saying... So like that, that says that free will exists. As a matter of fact... No, I, no, no, it's, it doesn't say that free will exists. It just says there's a causal influence on people's deterministic behavior. But let me, let me throw a more practical thing for somebody listening that's not up on their quantum physics, Heisenberg... <coughs> uh, Heisenberg principle. Principle, yeah. I thought that, that was Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, <laughs> Heisenberg, yeah. Heisenberg. Heisenberg, same guy. <laughs> so let's say, let's here's an example. Poverty is is very much related to where you're born, which is outside of your control. Even if you don't, if you believe free will, who you're born to, your mom. If you're born in the inner city or in a very poor part of West Virginia, we can pretty much predict with high accuracy that much higher chance you're going to end up in jail. Right. Much higher than you're going to end up in drug with drug addiction, alcoholism. <clears throat> so, should we put people in jail for selling drugs in the inner city? Because they're a victim of their circumstance. They're a victim of their circumstance. Well, well, well in your opinion, what are your guys' opinions? Well, well, so I mean, no, it's an interesting question that, that you raise, and and I guess my response would be that the decision to sell drugs or take drugs. He's talking about okay. NyQuil every day. It's, it's determined. Okay, so whether it's an environmental determinant, determinant or whether you have a genetic proclivity to that or whether you had parents who beat you or whether you, whatever, there are determinant. There are causal factors that created that circumstance. Yes. Right. 
What I'm saying is, should you hold people accountable? The answer is yes, because that creates a set of environmental circumstances, which is one set of causal variables that affects whether people choose to do that or not. Yeah, but shouldn't you, let's say that's true, but shouldn't you treat people differently? I'll give you an example. If you had somebody who's handicapped, they can't think through stuff. This is an actual case I read about, I don't remember exactly. It was a mother and her handy, somewhat handicapped son. <clears throat> and But he was like low IQ, like 90 IQ, wasn't that smart? She talked her son into helping her kill her ex-husband or her boyfriend, and he did it. I feel like justice is you treat him differently right. because he has an IQ of 90. He's influenced by the mom. Yeah. You can't see him of the same yeah. as a yeah. completely cogent person. Yeah. So if we, we agree on that, but if we agree on that. You have to agree with the other. Thank you. Right. Rome's right. right. Then you should agree that people in the inner city who grew up in horrible circumstances shouldn't go to maximum security uh, prison. And, and and I, 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 but that's what that happens. Yeah, yeah. and no, I, yeah. I agree. I totally agree. You have three strikes in California. Yeah. And so and just to go on the record, I'm for legalizing all drugs. Okay. All of them. No. If I want to take cocaine blow my brains out, that's my prerogative. Yeah. But we're not going to have a government welfare program that takes care of me if I blow my brains out. Right, so no, there wouldn't be health care for you nope. if you do that. Nope. So do you believe no. there should be universal health care? No, not at all. Not government to pay no. for it. It's none of the government's prerogative. So who should take care of the elderly and the sick, in your opinion? Um, their families, uh, philanthropists, what if they don't have what what about churches. Yeah. churches. <laughs> what if they don't have that? And right. you end you up with some people. Circumstance what if you have people <laughs> in poverty and everybody's poverty? Do you leave them? There's no perfect system this side of, of eternity. Uh, here's the thing. I actually there's no feel, perfect system. I actually feel like if we actually go to your system that you think you're, it's like ideal system for you, you would see all these edge cases and you would want to create a system to take care of them. Like because we cannot Yeah, it's see. called philanthropy. It's called caring. It's called community. It's called all sorts of things that are centralized, uh, um, uh, our centralized bureaucratic system has has uh, destroyed. What's the difference between... I, by the way, on the record, I'm going to go on record. Go. I 100% agree with Joel on this. So I'm taking a political stand. Oh, okay. And I'll give you, I'm going to give you real facts that have been proven over and over. It projects. I grew up quite a bit in North Carolina around housing projects, okay? Mm -hmm. I When I moved to North Carolina, we literally moved next door to a housing project. My bus pickup was in the middle of the housing project. And that's how I learned to play basketball. All my friends... It's funny, I had two sets of friends. I got to know through church, like Zach and Rick and these people, and then I had these inner city friends that I played basketball with. Mm -hmm. And those projects, were not, they should be burned to the ground. And they've done ex a lot of studies on both sides. In New York City, when they built these towers, my sister, my dad's from Harlem, I asked my dad from Harlem and my aunt, who just died at 99 years old. She's been there, in New she was born in 1917, I think, in in uh, Puerto Rico and then came to New York. She said, when I grew up, we were poor, but we didn't know it. We had a mom and a dad. Mm -hmm. And she's like, we got one pair of clothes a year, but we thought everybody did. Mm -hmm. And and then the housing projects came in, in the 60s and 70s, which they meant well. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden you took that away and these things are the worst. My, my sister's husband works in Harlem and he's like, Ty, you have no idea what goes on in these projects. He's a painter. Mm -hmm. He's like, these are hell holes. And people are trapped in it. He doesn't even like to talk to people. He goes fishing. He's like, I work Monday through Friday. He's like, you know, if people I see get killed. And try this, this, this. Mm -hmm. So you mean well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you ruin everything. You can't. That's and that's what, you, what happens with government. Yeah, but you government can't solutions. look just at edge cases. Because what Joel's saying, as I agree with, if you try to remove... All edge cases, edge cases being one family that starves to death, you end up causing mass poverty for 5,000 other people. So somebody has to... And beyond so that... So you're there, there, there's no system where nobody starves to death and takes care of the middle of the building. Blockchain might be able to do it. Yeah. Well, See, I, blockchain makes it all automated and smart contracts and things... We're talking about performance-driven. 
If there's no, as long as there's humans, there's people taking kickbacks in the projects. Yeah, I mean, is there any people right? are, when there's people and greed and mating, which people want status and money, they're stealing from the poor. So when you do these government, so we came back to robots making decisions. Well, at, at the at the yeah. end, of, like, I got uh, <laughs> robot. At, at, at the end of the day, um, all, you can't have charity that is based in violence. And if you don't pay your taxes, see who gets violent. So, so ultimately, all government charity comes at the end of a gun. The sheriff. They collect taxes. They collect sure. taxes. That's what Joel does. That's what a libertarian like so, Joel does. So, so, so you can't, you can't ultimately have charity that that, that come that is that is that is dependent and predicated on violence. Is it? So, enforcement, so, so, I call it. If you don't pay your taxes, enforcement, and then eventually they start taking things from you, and you don't come out of the house, they come over. Yeah, which is I'm I'm saying. And that, if you yeah, fight back, they so basically, you. let's put it this way: so, so, so they're they're going to come in and take and take my possessions, and give it to somebody else that somebody a thousand miles away in an office has determined is more deserving of it than letting me spend it the way I want to, and that's charity. Well, so, 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 here's, okay. okay, so let me, let me just add a point here, here to this, because I think what Joel's saying, and translated into my uh, bizarre language, uh, is that it, it <laughs> has something to do with copulating Earth. No, Earth was the same. Yeah, it's not copulating. That it violates uh, our, our evolved psychology. So we did evolve in small group living, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, and in small group living, conflicts arose. How did they resolve themselves? Well, one is, okay, you fuck my wife, I'll kill you. you know, oh, right. Okay, violence yeah, one. But the other is, there are the village elders. You yeah. know, so, so this person, you know, came on my land and stole my shit. Mm -hmm. And so I appeal to the village elders mm -hmm. and those so they confer, and then they pass a judgment. Mm -hmm. So it's all a very local situation. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we have this uh, evolved psychology that's designed for small group living. Mm -hmm. We transplant it into this weird modern world where mm -hmm. we have bureaucracies and other weird mm -hmm. shit that's making decisions for us. And very big, and, and very big. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's evolutionarily unnatural. Hmm. And this is where I agree with you on this uh -huh. issue. You know, it violates our sense of uh, justice. So, so even things like um, uh, like welfare. Now, some people uh, th this taps different aspects of our evolved morality. Some people say, "Well, I don't want people sponging off my stuff. I h work hard for my money, and these other people are not working, and they're just sponging off me." Mm -hmm. That's one. It, it's a reciprocal violation. Okay, free riders. We have we have an evolved mechanism against free riders. We don't like that. But then there's another set of our evolved psychology that is more altruistic. Yes. That is, yes. it, it's it's called need need based transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're run through a hard time in your life. I'm going to help you. The village is going to help you mm -hmm. because when you're running through a hard time, you're like, we're going to help you. Mm -hmm. And there is a kind of a, what's called indirect reciprocity. Mm -hmm. There are different terms for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but different political groups highlight one or the other aspect yes. of our evolved psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Democrat, right. liberal. And I'll tell you this to throw that out. Huh. You know, another thing people do, most politics is personality types. It's personality. People who yeah. gravitate towards being a Republican or conservative, they are of one type. They probably have lower open mind. They've done studies on this. And the Hexaco score, lower openness to new yeah. experience, lower agreeableness, lower forgiveness. And that, so part of the thing that's good about America is you have these parties that bring out both sides. The part that wants justice. Hey, you work for your money. I'm not going to give you. And then you, I call it the father and the mother instinct. So to me, Republicans, and this is sound a little gender, sexist, whatever. Republicans are more of the father side. You follow your trip, the dad says, life's tough, get up. <laughs> but you also need a mother that goes like, let me come cry on my shoulder. So a lot of the Democratic nurturing. principles are nurturing. It's like, look, you know, Donald Trump came in and cut meals and wheels. A lot of people are like, 
okay, the Republicans are like, why should we have to help me on wheels? And there's a part of me that's like, elders should be taken care of by their kids. But there's also a part of me that's like, do we have to cut that? Couldn't we cut a little bit of yeah, military yeah, exactly thing? Right. Do we have to start with Good. meals on wheels? Right. So I th- I honestly think right. we literally spend our life arguing over our personality types, just like you said. Right. Right. We're right. a little more aggressive, so we're like, bigger military. Well, yeah. we might yeah. do, tolerate a little bit of welfare if they wouldn't call it charity, because it, if I say, I'm going to give your money to that guy, that's not me being charitable. Right. So let's... Right, right. You, you can't really like that's our charity. externalities. I mean, I'm not going to. But so I bet you, you should try to give money to him. Uh, that's okay, but see, but see, but see, just to, um, uh, I'm sorry to uh, reiterate my point here. So, the Ache in Paraguay, they have a food sharing system. It's a tribe, uh, by the way. Okay, so, yeah. So, hunting, okay, you think, well, the, the, the good hunter, man, gets a bigger share of the meat. They don't. Right. Okay. Right. The good hunter, all the hunt, the meat from the hunt gets pooled, and there are central distributing systems, and they distribute it basically based on family size and need. Okay, not true of gathering. This is the interesting thing. Hunting is a high variance resource. Gathering is not. Gathering is based on how much effort you put in mm. to get. Mm. get. And so there, you what I gather, gather, I'm going to keep for me and my family. Uh, so you're saying but, gathering tribes are different than hunting no, tribes? No, no, no. Ache are both. Okay. Okay, what I'm saying, but the, 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 the commodities the, are the meat resources. Different. So if you're a hunter, you're going to be successful one week. You're not going to, you go two weeks with no meat. Okay, that's why they pool it. So high variance resources, they pool and, and share communally. Low variance resources that are dependent on your own personal labor mm. that you keep for yourself and mm. your family, and so and so that uh, so that would be in our society. Would the parallel be like entrepreneurs who kind of got lucky? Like so it's that. like it's Mark literally Zuckerberg it's like cash system. system. You hit more than one billion dollar a year like revenue. You should have to give. You should more. have to hire more because because you Mark Zuckerberg just... didn't work so much harder that he's worth seventy billion. But you can also play the devil's advocate. <laughs> he works smarter, so it's now not just. But it doesn't matter. You can say the same thing about the hunter. It's actually all nutrient density of what you bring in. So gatherers bring like berries versus meat, which is very nutrient density uh, dense. So, so he's not saying be, it's that. He's not yeah, saying, he's saying it's, he's saying it's the it's, variability. Yeah, it's sometimes you could be a great person. hunter and nothing yeah. walks by, you're blind. Yeah, you, but, but what I'm saying is that you capture big prey occasionally that yeah. is like hitting Facebook. Billion dollars. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because you can't replicate that thing. But so that has to be taxed. And mm. if it is like normal labor, right. it shouldn't be right. 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 The footnote to this, though, is that the good hunters, Better they status. benefit in other ways. Better status. Two yes. ways. Yeah, status. Get so, so, so one is... <laughs> well, come back to me. So, so, so and everything. And, and so, and it all... Uh, okay, so, so the, one, the good it. hunter uh, <laughs> takes, a, takes a piece of the... the, the we are going to tax you, rib. but you get all the women. No, so the good hunter <laughs> takes a piece of the prime rib... And gives it and says, bring this to my mistress before I go back and distribute it centrally. Uh, so first of all, so the good <laughs> hunters have, the mistress. Okay. Good hunters have <laughs> more mistresses. And second, there's competition to keep the good hunters in the group. And so other people are motivated to take good care of the children of uh, the good hunters. So they take the splinters out, they make sure they're well fed, etc. Huh. So and that so they don't leave to go to another group. Exactly. The kids exactly. Are, yeah. So they don't direct off from good the Presbyterians and become Methodists. There you go. Are or leave America and go to Canada. Yeah, yeah that's exactly So there are the benefits. They're just not, the hunter doesn't get directly a bigger chunk of the meat, uh, but there are other they're, indirect they're, benefits. They're, but the thing that I would say, just speaking to Joel too, on top of that is, if you just do a mental experiment, what if you switched it? to let's say let's just take one thing you got rid of universal uh you got rid of welfare so the question was would inner cities which or or real rural places would they get worse than they are now it can either stay the same get worse or get better that's the only three logic i mean how can it get better how can yeah. inner cities how can it get worse you mean no, that's fine how can it get better how can oh, we because, because universal because the, healthcare Let's say, let's, say, let's do welfare. Let's, healthcare, let's do welfare. You get rid of welfare. I 
People respond to rewards. And one thing that, that Warren, uh, Charlie Munger says, beware of perverse incentives. So, for example, if you're paying per child that people have, people can have more kids. <laughs> right. Right, right. If you get more welfare, right. guarantee that right. is common uh, sense. Okay, what what I, excellent, what, excellent. What I would introduce, and I totally yeah, right. agree with that. Uh, you know, absolutely, people are. But one of the things that is critical that people don't take into consideration is the point I raised just a second ago, which is the variance in inner cities. In the projects, what you have is high variance in resources. Okay, partly due to drugs or whatever. So you have some people driving around in, in the Rolls's yeah. uh, and other people, you know, going to McDonald's. When you have high variance in resources, what that creates is in male psychology, I'm going to do the risk taking to gain because I want to get the high resource. That's why there's okay. more crime. Yeah. By male. So this, this is the fascinating thing. So you said, well, poverty causes X. Well, causes X in different in ways in male brains and female brains, cause male brains to take the risks. The women aren't taking the risks, or at least not as much in those circumstances. So I think the variance in resources is a critical part of the causal explanation for these things. But so if you give, there's not enough money. It's You but, look at the math, you yeah. can't just take all the money. If you gave, took all the money from Bill Gates, it doesn't. It doesn't help. If you gave every penny he had, okay, let's right. say he has, let's take Bezos, $100 billion, and there's three hundred. Bezos, Jeff Bezos, uh, you give a hundred billion to three hundred and thirty million people. How many? How much dollars is that? Yeah, you do well, actually, I mean, you, you do the math right now. If you take, if you take U.S. welfare and give it to every person in the U.S., it's thousands of dollars. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's it's you know it's twenty five thousand dollars per person in the U.S. Our current expenditure, and where does it go? Wait, so well, I, I, I would like I would like to bring in one other. Ahead? Yeah, every American. You you take the budget, divide it by the number of Americans, and it's like twenty five thousand dollars a person. I mean, it it's, can't, it's, it's can't, way up. Can't be GDP of the United States is forty five thousand dollars a head. Are you sure about? Okay, I'm gonna look this up. Because the entire GDP of the United States is... Maybe it's not 25, but, but it's yeah. it, it's big. A few thousand, I believe. It, it, it's big. Thousand, it's yeah. big. Okay. Yes. All right. Let me inject one other thing. We're, we're, we're taking a, a contextual, you know, a multi-threaded context and, and trying to strip out one little, one little issue, welfare. Okay? In holistic thinking... You you can never you can never strip out from a context one little thread because everything relates to everything and, and so you can't you can't just deal with with one are you with me yeah so I would just like to inject the fact that in most of the in in most inner city especially crumbling inner city situations Detroit being the number one example perhaps St Louis being number two St Louis has lost. Um, 50,000 in population every 10 years since 1950, okay? So if you go to St. Louis today, you will find um, uh, uh, fully excavated expressways that are now grass fields. They, they've got actually community gardens on, on ramps that were excavated for expressways that they abandoned because of the you know, Rust Belt, okay? Here's my deal. You can't just look at this as a single issue thing. If let's take the extreme example of the single mom of four in a, in a food desert. I mean, in my term, food desert is a is a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Most of those are in very crumbling areas. I mean, Baltimore has two hundred thousand acres in the city. St. Louis has more than that. Detroit has uh, uh, I don't know, like two million in the city of Detroit. If you, if 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 the single mom of four who had an entrepreneur who came to a knowledge society conference on a, <laughs> on a scholarship sponsorship be, because somebody Promo. sponsored and said here's a here's an up and comer you know we're gonna we're gonna sponsor three minority single moms from Detroit to come to the knowledge society entrepreneurial conference okay and she comes and she drinks the Kool Aid. I mean, goes home and says, 
man, I'm going to start a food business in my precinct. So she goes to a vacant lot. And she puts in a garden and she gets some chickens and rabbits and she starts making, you know, pot pies in her apartment and selling them to the people in the in the complex. City government is about its life. Within 30 minutes, she's going to have 10 bureaucrats knocking on her door saying, this isn't zone commercial. You've got to have a fire extinguisher licensed on, on the wall. You've got to have handicapped parking, handicapped access. Bathrooms, a HACCP plan, uh, 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 right? Uh, um, you know, approved electrical, uh, a fire code approved. The fact is that freedom and liberty enable way more people than taking the few extreme examples. Of, of, of who doesn't get helped in freedom and liberty and trying to create a bureaucracy to be a, a, a security net for every conceivable extreme in the issue. It, it, it's not perfection or, or horrendous. It's, 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 it's weighing the risk-benefit of two imperfect systems, and I would suggest that the that in in, in aggregate, the, the the falling through the cracks element of people in a freedom based system is going to be less, and people will be more affirmed and empowered in that system overall than a bureaucratic system that's centralized, trying to make sure that not a single person falls through the cracks. And the, and going back. To the blockchain, blockchain will solve a lot of this stuff. People, less people will fall through the cracks. There's other ways. I, big government. Look, this is where Joel, you will like cryptocurrency because uh -huh. you're learning about it. As right, you said, right, right. Mm -hmm. cryptocurrency hates centralized mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, right. It blames most problems on centralized, which maybe is an extreme thing. But I wrote a tweet today that kind of hit me in the shower as I study history. Basically. We follow crazy people. When I read from a personality standpoint, from what I've learned from you, Dr. Buss, like Adolf Hitler is a classic narcissist and probably psychotic and probably Machiavellian. Stalin was extremely Machiavellian. You know, the, uh, Mao Zedong, have you ever read about Mao? Yeah. Mao Zedong well, killed yeah. the most people of our time. Way more than Hitler. Oh, yeah. 50 to 100 million people. Way more than Stalin. Yeah, yeah. He may be the most narcissistic person. You don't even have to know what narcissism is. I read his, this, there's this new anthology of him. It's a biography. Probably the most narcissistic human to walk this planet. So what happens in centralized power, because he got centralized, he like ran all of China. Mm -hmm. And then you have Stalin run all of US, well, it wasn't Russia. USSR, all of what we call Russia. And then in Hitler all of Germany and central powers. There's huge problems. And one of them is just the people who want to control are the worst people. And I think the same thing happens even in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's the worst are rising to the top. I mean, no offense to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Obama. They're not the best people. There could be a lot better people. I'm not saying who the worst or the best. I guarantee you. In the you, last election, I don't know when I heard more people say, we have 330 million American citizens, yeah. and this is the best we the can do. The only two. Really? Yes. I meet people that are sharper, but the problem is, in a centralized, it selects for certain traits. For example, who's the best campaign person? Uh -huh. Why do you want somebody who's good at campaigning? That's completely separate than who's good at run debates. Administration. Even debates. That's like debates yeah. bring out people that are great yeah. at debating, yeah. not necessarily being great at president. Yeah. So this is what I was saying, the blockchain might be the answer to every conversation we're having where it will just remove that whole thing. Could, like, could you unpack that? What, how will that... So I'll give you a practical thing. This, this is a, just a simple, not a complicated... Right now, unfortunately, a lot of people don't go to vote, right? So democracy works when a, a large number of people vote. What percentage of people actually go to the polls? I mean, to the, to the voting... Do you know? 
It was higher than what I thought it would be. I think it's like uh, of 25 to up to 50 percent. I, I was going to say so 35 to 40. I thought yes. it was so let's say 30, 30, it, it, it's, it's that good. 50 percent. It's but why is 35 good? 35 is not good. Yeah, no. That's 35 right. not. You'll yeah. get more accurate when you have more. I think what if it was as easy as everybody in America votes by going on their iPhone. It's completely high. It's highly secure. It's unmanipulated. That you can't manipulate. It would be almost impossible because everybody could see the transactions on an open ledger, and everybody votes. Now you might say that doesn't matter that much. Well, maybe not in America, but it matters in a lot of countries in the world, where Idi Amin or Putin. How many times has Putin won in in Russia? He wins. At, how long has he been president for? <laughs> Putin's always <laughs> president. It's not as long as he's suggesting is a blockchain type system. Yeah, because Putin's so, 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 cheating. Sure. Yeah, Decentralized. Decentralized. Everybody in Russia who has a phone. No human can impact. And you can't go to a station where there can be people watching and nah, 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 and yeah. it's just anonymous and everybody feels that way. People are going to vote. So, so maybe not as much The for the bullshit is lower. Much. It's almost impossible even, to manipulate. Even, even rewarding, like even welfare or all these things. Yes. If you're a blockchain, it's like, yeah, it's, you it's know how many people, people are getting collecting social security on an uncle's social security number that's been dead for 30 years? Mm, right. This kind of thing happens all right, the right, time. Right. I mean, just think about money. If you had a whole bunch of money in your bank account, and you told anyone in your neighborhood, here's three rules to get the money. If you have a runny nose, if you, you know, haven't had a job for a month, and well, what people gonna figure out how to get that money? They're gonna put. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're gonna put something have on their kid. nose that makes have it. Have a kid. That's another one. <laughs> yeah, have a kid. And people just gonna start doing that. People we respond to rewards. This is the free will thing. If you ever want to argue free will, or this isn't free will. This is called free riders. Free riders. Patience is to be free riders when it's to our advantage. Incentive free riders. Yes, but we could eliminate all that. Then you could go deeper with it. For example, I mean, this is. As if you want to hear me get super far out on politics, mm -hmm. I have seen a system that works. It sounds outrageous to say the only system I've ever seen of leadership that works pretty well, at least when I say pretty well, 10 times better than ours, is how they used to do it in the Bible or how the Amish still do it. You can't want to be a pastor. It's impossible to become a leader mm -hmm. of an Amish community. It's impossible. If you have, from your childhood, aspired to be the pastor that runs the community, the bishop. First, so this is how they do it. They have a nomination. All the adults, male and female, vote for who they want to nominate. Okay? So in the Amish community, nobody wants to nominate. you. They'll never vote for you if you're, like, campaigning. They don't value that. Right, right. But even if they did, if you convince all the Amish... To vote for you because you're a smooth talker. So they vote your nom and they usually normally like four to six people. They literally take straws, out of a hat. put it in the middle or a hat, and they pick one out. Mm -hmm. That's how you should have leaders. That's why, like in Israel, everybody goes into the army. If you want good police officers, here's a there is zero solution to our current police system of if you think there's police brutality, the only simple solution is you have a blockchain application. That literally selects who has to be a policeman for two years. It's like it's part of it's like a draft, and then you'll get some nice so people, some mean professional, people. professional uh, people who yeah. live their lives uh, with authority. And who do you think and now applies to be at the, Yeah, people who wow. think applies for the police department. Ain't hey, normal people. There's a few one out of ten. TSA. <laughs> TS. But I'm just at politics. It should be we should be run by people that don't want to be politicians because they're that. That's what. What did what's his name say? I do W C Fields. I do not want to be part of any club that will have me as a member. Yeah, it was, uh, that's yeah, W C Fields. Uh, it, Groucho Marx. 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 Yeah. So what happens is if I study history, General Custer was one of the most narcissistic people oh, yeah. in history, and he led. People don't realize Custer. Mm -hmm. Last stand was a disaster for America. It caused the Native American wars. We went to war against the. It was. It's all these bad things about America. Um, you go through history. Even George Washington, not to be controversial. I know some people here yeah. love George Washington, but George Washington. Nope. He had his slaves, and I just read the story of Ona Judge, who she ran away. He moved to a free. He when he's president, he went to a free. It was free. And she ran away, and he hunted her down. 
So, well, the Whiskey Rebellion was yeah. the first time American troops were used against American citizens yes. right in George Washington's day, and it was because the, far, the Western farmers in Pennsylvania figured out how to take apple nutrition to Philadelphia via brandy. Well, Washington, George Washington had the biggest um, uh, brewery, uh, the biggest... Distiller. Uh, distiller, thank you. Distiller, that's what the word I was looking for. Um, in America at, at the time, at the time. And he didn't like all that brandy coming in from western Pennsylvania. But, you know, in a day before refrigeration, that was the only way to, to, to get apple nutrition in a, in a bouncy ox cart to Philadelphia for a week. You couldn't send apples. They'd all right. been bruised and mushed. So you made brandy and you could send bottles and preserve the nutrition in bottles. But Washington didn't like the competition and he thought they were making an end run around him. And so let's go. Remember this. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Every time. And so what I'm saying is it, all these questions to me are common sense. If we make absolute power around universal health care, yay, it's gonna something's gonna get corrupt up there. First of all, as far as I know, Obamacare force people to buy insurance from a private company. There's yeah. zero chance there's not some corruption. Imagine getting that contract with That's Obama. Right. There's yeah. no way. If that was on the blockchain or even Donald Trump, what was the thing in Puerto Rico? This one company, this small firm in Wisconsin got the rights to rebuild all of Puerto Rico yes. for like hundreds of millions. Yeah, of I mean, they revoked that. But yeah, yeah, they revoked yeah, it because they, it got yeah. out. Right. Oh boy, trust me. Right. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm a businessman. Like $35 million contract. I'm a businessman. If I'm friends with Obama and, he, and I got a healthcare company and Obama's like, hey, I'm going to do a healthcare thing. I'm going to be like, man, man, I haven't man. seen you in a while. I have with you. Have I told you about my great company? <laughs> Look, they couldn't even get a website up. They built the world. Remember that website? Yeah, like $25 million. $25 million. Website. And it crashed. I could build that myself. Yeah. Yes. We can build this for a pro how much should a website like $7, that? Seven thousand dollars. Yes. It should cost seven thousand. <laughs> Centralized power is a disaster. But 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 realize again, in context, why did we have a dysfunctional uh, a dysfunctional healthcare system? It's because everybody's junk food. Well, no, no. It, it, you back up, you you back start backing up, backing up, and what you find is the wage controls that FDR put in as all part of the new interventionist New Deal, employers didn't have a way to reward workers because they couldn't wage control. You know, they, they couldn't they couldn't pay them more. So so they're looking around. Well, how, how can we reward this good guy over here? Oh well, we'll buy him health insurance. Right. And so so the whole idea of an employer of of, of a worker being entitled to health insurance through his employer was a man, an artificially manipulated context created by manipulation of Franklin Delano, what I call him Roosevelt-ski, um, <laughs> nice communist, um, <laughs> uh, you know, at, at, that, at that time. Well, think about ethanol, the most harebrained oh, idea to, oh, to yeah. save the planet. Yeah. Well, well yeah. the main thing destroying yeah. the soil is corn, how it's grown now. It's like no to even no-till corn is a nightmare. But they're plowing up the Brazilian rainforest, the Argentina pampas, all this stuff to grow ethanol, which <laughs> then to save the planet. So it's like let's destroy the planet two steps and then bring it back one step. But here, but here again, that was centralized, though. Yeah, here, here yeah, that, here again, I don't have a problem philosophically with ethanol. You know, if it's part of a of a holistic, multi-speciated, you know, system, the problem is that when you have government subsidies to go out and build a you know hundred million dollar uh, plant, you that that infrastructure then dominates the decision making, uh, the whole decision making yeah. freedom of of however far out in a radius it has to go from that plant to feed that plant. So our our infrastructure determines what we do. It doesn't matter whether we need ethanol, whether it is valuable, whether it destroys the soil or anything. By gum, we built that $300 million facility, and we're going to make sure that keeps going. And, and, and 
that's why our 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 single use industrial scale infrastructure comes back to haunt us because it's not retrofitable and we become emotionally and economically dependent on it and it then controls our decision making for the next you know foreseeable yeah i mean all these things but but a, but a backyard a backyard ethanol facility where a guy's you know got four or five acres and he's that's wonderful that that should be part of a of a you know, multi-dimensional. Yeah, but not plowing up two million acres of pump no, with one no, guy no, on a huge no, absolutely not. tractor. No, no, no. But that, that, I'm telling you, you'll like this, Alex. At the end of the day, everything comes down to money, unfortunately. For yes. people, money, it's like if you sniff yep. all the way back through, yep. like whiskey revolution, <laughs> war, da, da, da. Yeah, it's yeah. like you always end up sniffing right to a pile of dollar bills. It's like, yeah. okay, that, I could, something now smelled in here. Yeah. So now, I, do, I do like that you're not red or blue, but you're green. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm libertarian. Is that what you would well, consider? Well, no, me? I mean, it's... Joel, you've had an influence on me. I'm probably... Not, not green environmentalist. <laughs> But green, I mean, it, you're green money. In other words, oh, green to money. You might, you might be red. What color is cryptocurrency? Color. Yeah, <laughs> it's transparent. Digital. Oh, it's it's light. transparent. Light. It's light. It's Joel and I are going to make a decision of our own free will <laughs> to stand up and walk out of this room, and the rest of it. I mean, you're gonna have to sit here and wait till your neurons bump up against each other. No, this is a once in a lifetime conversation. I know. We need to have some Red Bull for you. Uh, Red Bull will alter your neurons. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Or would lift your spirit. There you go. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't say in in, in a short order we would do that. I'm just saying. Oh, you're just saying at some point. I thought you were saying enough of this nonsense no, 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 conversation. No. I am. Let, let, let's, let, let's, we need. I need more Dr. David Buss because Dr. David Buss sometimes forgets how smart he is and just said stuff. As if we're all supposed to be like, oh yeah. <laughs> He's like the dualistic Cartesian, <laughs> Cartesian everybody. <laughs> and I see him like stop because no one's responding and we're like, but we don't know exactly what that means. He's expecting you to yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what I think about when I think about the coexistence of physical and then And even him when he's giving his explanations. I literally I'm gonna use this on dates going forward. I'm like Yeah, you know what? Exploit I'm coalitional not... psychology, I think was a friend. No, but well, the best yeah. part is he I'm was trying we weren't getting his point, so he was making it with the same terms he did before yeah. and we still wasn't yeah. getting it. He was like no, the variants <laughs> were all like that still doesn't prove the point because we don't understand you. So he said the same thing twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not the way to explain something people aren't dead. Okay. We need the only thing that would make this better, Zach. We need Ben Shapiro. Oh my. And Mike and, and Michael Knowles and Rush Limbaugh. No, God. Yes. It would just make it awesome. But here's some, we need somebody in the spirit of of, of fairness. Who would be somebody that can, is a good representing? The Democratic side. You gotta always have all uh, sides. Yeah, Bill Mark. Bill Mark. Who? Bill. Oh no, no. no Bill, no, no. Bill Mark. So, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Rome. Who read do you Michael's think makes good? Read Michael Knowles' book, and you'll find some suggestions. In so, Doctor Buss, would you say you are more Republican or Democrat? Uh, <laughs> neither, actually. Okay. Libertarian? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, communist? I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> because you have to fit one of these labels or our brain will blow. Definitely not communist. <laughs> communist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a Republican. Yeah. Although, have you ever oh. read Karl Marx? I'm telling you, I'm Karl, Karl Marx, Marx is yeah. one of the most intelligent. He, oh, that yeah, guy, I can see why communism took over half of the world. You read it, and you're kind of like, hmm. It is kind of exploitation of labor. I hire people to work for me, and they get paid less than they're worth to me. If I can get an employee who does marketing and makes me a million dollars, and he only wants... 50 grand, I'm like, yay. <laughs> I mean, th honestly, that's, I'm just trying to be fair. So when he says there's an exploitation of labor, I mean, it becomes semantics. And then, Joel, I'm going to tell you something. I want to I steer this. I want to hear your, your smart people's opinion. 
The honest solution, which probably will never happen, will be a return to small village life. Uh, you were taught, you called it, what did you call it? Small group small living? Group living yeah. So one thing I heard from Joel, which when I was there at 19 and I've now lived out, cities cause a lot of problems. Now, to be fair, cities cause a lot of increase in creativity and there's a lot of good things out of it, but centralization of people causes a lot of problems too. Whether it's how we grow food, people are, you one of the reasons common sense is gone it's because when you're detached from like mm -hmm. simple things yeah, like yeah. I grow my own food, mm -hmm. when there's half the kids in the inner city mm -hmm. do not really know that yogurt comes from cows. I promise mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. When you get that de detached from reality, it makes sense that you're detached from lots of realities. Mm -hmm. And so common sense, as I see as an entrepreneur, I just realized like if you want to make a million dollars a year now, there's so many tools. It's basically like a series of probably about 300 common sense decisions. What am I good at? Okay, I'm gonna build, what do people want? Like, and I see people detach from that. This old guy, older guy came to my house, he's probably like 65 or 70, and he's like, I made an app. I retired, I made an app, I need your opinion. And so I looked at app, it was probably the worst idea. It was like solving a problem no one cared about. It's like underwater basket weaving app, okay? And I was like, did you put a lot of money in building this? He's like, but my entire life savings of $1 million. I told him, you just lost all your money. So that's a detachment from common sense. A simple farm kid, I feel like, who grew up connected and had to, you know, okay, the barn door fell off the house. I got to get hinges. They can do like this sequential logical stuff. Okay, I need that. The barn's half a mile away. So let me make a list for myself. So I walk there, do this. All that's lost. It's just, I'm telling you, Joel, it's lost. It doesn't matter if I hire somebody. I, I have somebody working for me who has an Ivy League degree. They make the worst decisions by far of anyone I've hired. And PhDs I've hired. It's like, it's no relevance. You're a smart PhD, but it's uncorrelated. I, I, you have I, a I PhD think, because you were smart. It's not it, the other way. The PhD uh, didn't it, make it, you smart. It is because the, uh, people are protected. So your yes. survival does not depend on making good decisions anymore. Therefore, you've been making terrible decisions all your life and you somehow are here, still here, you have not died. Yes. Therefore, you just never learn how to make good decisions. Yeah, because discernment is like a muscle. Yes. Yeah, discernment has to be exercised. Yeah. I was not exercised. You love this time. I was, uh, did a speech in the Canary Islands. They brought me over there to do a speech. And uh, it, was, it was shortly after the election. And, of course, if you remember the election, this is the, the Trump-Hillary election. If you remember the, the map of the U.S. and the red and the blue, and I mean, the map looks almost red. Mm -hmm. The blue is coastal. on the west coast. Yeah. It's, uh, it's totally coastal. Yeah. And it's totally urban. When, when, they, when they did it by, whatever, by county or precinct, you know, blue is, is completely urban and red is completely rural. And so at this conference... Uh, it was all about living sustainably, and they had, you know, cities that have that, that have put in uh, you know, no motorized vehicles for three days. You know, and, and it was very really interesting. But 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 for sure, all of the, the the big wheels that were speaking, they were extol they were Wendell Berry, you know, extolling the virtues of the agrarian mind and 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 farmers and indigenous wisdom and people that work the earth and how how whatever, uh, um, commonsensical they are versus Monsanto and the scientists in the laboratory. Are you with me? Okay, so this this was a demeanor. This was a, a lot like, like a, you know, a kind of thread, you know, through the, con okay. So, <clears throat> no, for the record, I didn't vote for Trump, okay? I didn't vote for Hillary either. But anyway, um, I was a libertarian, which I've, which I've done for many, many, many elections. Um, so, anyway, um, so we're having dinner, and they start, I mean, I'm the only American at, the, at this table, and, you know, there's Canary Islands, there's a guy from the Netherlands, France, uh, all of and they just start, how, how can you even, how can you even go back to America? Yeah, and they just start just haranguing on the election and Trump, you know, how, un, how many people could be so stupid and all this stuff. So I just let this conversation run for a while, and I, I, I asked him, I said, 
you know, a thread of this conference, all of you guys have been saying how people that are close to the land and on the land and farm, you know, how, how, how they're better stewards, they have more understanding, you know, blah, 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 blah. yeah, 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 yeah. I said, have you seen that map of the election? <laughs> yeah, I said, where's the Trump votes? It's in rural America, where the farmers are. And they just... <laughs> you messed up their conversation. <laughs> I did, I did, and they hated me. They, I mean, he was asked to leave the Canary Islands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was persona non grata. Uh, your passport, it's no I good. Mean, it was just silence, and they just changed the subject and, and didn't. That was it. Removed you from the agenda. It, 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 it was it. It was it. They couldn't. They couldn't come to grips with their own. Well, they, they, well, they'd been had and they knew it. They, they, Zach just says liberals. That's how Zach explains that. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, well, you you know, whether you do or not, and and and, and uh, it, I just. But I, do you think I, Gary I Johnson, that wasn't that the, the libertarian guy? Yeah. Did you, what, wasn't he we, somewhat of a income yeah, too? Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah, they were like, yeah, yeah, what's, he, he, he was, like, what's that or something? Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He was certainly forgot. not. He was certainly not the best. That's what I'm saying. Look, libertarians too centralized too. They got they have a free yeah. party. Right. So parties attract yeah. people that want to be yeah. the well, It's almost you, like non, it's almost ironic. I want to be the centralized leader of a non centralized movement. It <laughs> does. It's right. libertarian of all of them should start by randomly picking somebody, or not randomly, but picking out of a pool. Yeah, well, we just we just don't have it in our psyche, I think, to. Blockchain. Anyway, uh, my, blockchain going to change all this. My, I'm telling you, and this is. Better than AI. It's not artificial intelligence. It's like human. I, by the way, you know what I believe? No, it is it, what we need is a new AI. Yes, it is. Agrarian intelligence. Agrarian intelligence. Yeah, okay, or, Joel, listen to this. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Yeah, I know. Forever. <laughs> yeah. Aiding intelligence we could have. We have, we have, there no, collaborative that. intelligence is the one I bet, I bet everything on. I don't think it's going to be cyborg machines. It's going to be, if you could connect all 7 billion people together, it will be more powerful than any supercomputer that's going to come out in 100 years. There's no way Adolf Hitler would have come to power if everybody in the world voted. There's no way. Germans got tricked into it. The whole world would. Anyway, Dr. Buss, I have a question for you. Enough of me. I already know what I think. This is why I don't take too many stands, because then I say too much and I don't listen to other smart people. So, see, I go, thought you were going to say something different by what you were, or the threat you started, which was that the, the um, uh, group intelligence was um, greater than individual brilliance. It is. Okay. I thought that's the path. That is the threat. That's what he says. It's actually, okay. that's, that's what blockchain is. Yes. He tells okay. me all the time. Okay. Okay, I still is, like, uh, kind of like you. Yeah, 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 yeah. In seventy-five years, I'm gonna be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you all the money I'll I have. In seventy-five years, I can tell you. No, I think Tony's right on, on this, and I've changed my view on it because I, uh, I used to think, okay, it's the brilliant individual innovator, but when you go back in the history of science and the history of ideas, you realize that these brilliant innovators, yeah, they took a slightly larger step than the others. But that design space would have been discovered regardless. Yes. I, I, that's I, what I, we're doing is we're exploring design space. I don't think it's brilliance. I, th I think it's courage more than anything else. Basically, you have the balls to kind of like transcend a given construct of thinking. So everybody thinks one way. You just dare to think different. Yeah, yeah, you know. Or you say like, it. But other then, people yeah, think. yeah, or that, or that. Yeah. Or, like, or, you just that, dare to think contradict different. This, this other notion that, that when you have, I mean, and it's the Darwinian process, kind of what you describe is what you do with your ads. Like, say you have 50 different variants, 500 variants, and see which ones work. Right. Okay, so when you have five million, five billion people producing variants, see which ones work, that's going to produce a more intelligent mm. set of solutions, mm. potentially, mm. or sure. than, it, it is than, more than the single brilliant, innovative scientists, you know, come, you, so, but, but with the caveat that 
there are these brilliant, innovative scientists that do make a larger leap than most right. other people. But well, they also caused a lot of the trouble. So I, people don't read enough history. They caused the trouble. Trump, uh, yes, they but caused big trouble. I, I think innovators. Both of them are ways to, to move forward. So having a lot of people making a lot of mistakes to find the winners is one approach to win. Also having one person literally sitting down and figuring something out and making a big leap forward is another solution. Sometimes A works, sometimes B works. Both of them can work. Yeah. But, but think no, about this practical application. OJ Simpson case. Or um you know this recent case that was so controversial in San Francisco where this woman was killed by an illegal immigrant. Well, right. What was his name? Her name is Kate Stanley. Kate, Kate, yeah. Kate, it was like there was a hashtags about this woman. Yeah, yeah. You needed more people than twelve jury. You should have had a hundred thousand people vote on that. You would have got the so right the answer. You would have got the right answer. Twelve people can be manipulated by a lawyer. You cannot ma manipulate a hundred thousand, a million people in forty-eight countries. So the you I guarantee you would have got the right thing. You would have displayed that on somebody's phone. You watch the thing. You watch the evidence on both sides. So you're that's saying, on the blockchain. So you're saying the O.J. Simpson jury was manipulated? Absolutely. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. I was like, wait a second. I'm holding you out of front of the board. Yeah. I know personally some of the attorneys. And they told me they can tell you from insider information. One of the things, you know that there was a famous whispering O.J. Simpson to one of his lawyers. Do you know what the, the lawyer said? I know. He said, I told you. He said on day one, I know we don't get it. I know how to make you innocent. Of course, you pay me enough money, you'd be innocent, my friend. Now, blockchain would have made it fair. You cannot have 12 jurors. It's the right, they had the right idea in the 1700s or whatever when we came up with the Constitution or even pre American idea of the jury, but they didn't have technology. So you could only practically have 12 people. No. Now we have zero constraints on that. Have 50,000 smart people well, get watch a five minute well, clip and vote globally. Well, well, Guarantee you, you'll well, get more justice in this. You know, okay, people getting injustice. I agree with you. But also the fact that people, the jurors are uh, influenced by shit that they shouldn't be influenced by. So they think eyewitness testimony is more reliable yes. than DNA, you know. And eyewitness testimony is like the worst, the most unreliable. That, so, yeah. So jurors, but 50,000 people, you know the yeah. old saying, it's like you can fool some yeah, of the people so all the time, you can't fool all the people all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Common yeah. sense kicks in at high numbers. High yeah. numbers is a beast. By the way, if you believe in American democracy, you really believe what I'm saying. It's the underpinning of America. You cannot have a centralized king. Well, Nothing that smacks of that. You're concerned about, um, you know, they said an, an informed electorate is, uh -huh. the, is the bedrock. So you're not concerned that you, you democratize so that you got 300 million, but, well, not 300 million, but 200 million, mm -hmm. whatever, voting. You're not concerned that, that they're not informed enough well, first of all, the no, media is the worst. What you got to de you got to deconstruct. You shouldn't have centralized media. That that doesn't work. CBS, CNN, all these things—they're easy to manipulate. I promise you. I'm telling you this as somebody who doesn't even like politics that much. I know exactly how they get an article to the top. There's SEO manipulation of Google. So when you type in things, things get in the top. They phrase things. Insert. I'll give you the perfect example. This is a. This is something where I think they did Trump wrong. Okay, I'm not a Trump supporter or hater. This is the most ridiculous thing. Trump gets elected. A month later, I read this article and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. It said largest resignation of State Department heads in history. So I'm like, oh my gosh, all these smart people at the State Department are like, we're not going to handle so. I click on the article. First paragraph is like two people, two out of five or something, or four out of five people. He fired three of them. One of them was like it was his time to resign because of the A. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's. But if you only read the top, yeah. so what you have to do is you cannot have a, a fair modern um, media cannot be what we have now. It has to be lots of people paid a little bit. Not one person paid a lot. Because one person paid a lot, we'll figure out how to get paid more. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And our media is not tough. You can't, 
That's why I don't like politics. I feel like I can't actually know what's going on. Does Donald Trump uh, lay in bed all day? Say, oh, one guy said he says he lays in bed all day and watches six hours of the news. Other people are reliable sources are like the man's a hardworking dude. He's an entrepreneur. What am I supposed to believe? Yeah, I have to fly the to the White House. The criticism of Donald Trump, though, some of that you don't need to get it from the media. It comes from him. You make your own decision his based tweets. on. You, I mean, not, not, I mean, you there make you your go. own decision. Twitter is based, better based on his own. But Twitter, everybody says it's bad that Donald Trump has Twitter. I think it's good. It's decentralized. It's he just says what he wants to say. You can huh. vote. You can read it and go, I like this guy or I don't like it. Why do we need an intermediary? I'm totally with Donald Trump. On him being able to use and let him post outlandish things, then you can decide whether you agree with his outlandish things. That's actually Twitter is an example of blockchain. It's an ugly old version. So, so what, what is the definition of blockchain? So the new point of little like 1.0 would be like Twitter. Everybody gets an account, and Donald Trump can just tweet for himself. So, if you want to know what Donald Trump believes, if he says, "I think Haiti is a shithole," that's his tweet. We don't have to hear secondhand. It's probably accurate if Donald Trump says it and he reaffirms it on TV on a video. Video would be a point of blockchain. If you see Donald Trump sitting there on a live thing going, I hate Haiti, you're getting it firsthand from them. Before that, we had like news reporters. Journalists, by the way, are one of the most correlated with psychopathy. Journalists highly related to psychopathic mental diseases. CEO. So, so I still don't know what blockchain So 3.0. So <laughs> 3.0 will be a new system, a newer system, for example. You know how they say, like, sources said Donald Trump lays in bed all day? Those sources will kind of be able to be anonymous, but not necessarily. So what will happen is somebody will go on their phone who's an aide to Donald Trump. They'll say, Donald Trump is sleeping all day. They'll press submit. But there's 30 other aides who also see that message come through. And 29 of them go, bullshit, he does not. So the blockchain verifies that that first person's lying. None of us are there with Donald Trump, right? But if 30, 29 of his aides anonymously can say that other one is bullshit, then we discard it. It's not news. So, so, so it's verification. So, so, it's it, so it's a way of increasing the accuracy of the information. Yes. Okay. Yes, which you know is the it most important thing. Right. I mean, in a way that's not, hard to hack. We are not. You would have to. Submitting. You would have to go pay off all twenty nine yeah. aides, which we know is hard. If you start slipping a hundred bucks to right. one of them, maybe you can keep them quiet. If I go and try to pay, we know. Right. What is that? The cartel effect. You know, then economics. When you ever have a cartel, if the cartel's too big, mm. someone will cheat. So someone will take it and go, "Hey, I just got paid a hundred. Ty tried to slip me a thousand bucks." So by ha me having to corrupt that system of 30 aides having to verify a piece of information, I'd have to pay off 30, which becomes very hard. Now imagine there's a five, th here's a blockchain application. 200 years ago, you're like, Bob shot, uh, Alex shot Joel for no reason. There's no cameras. Alex is very convincing. Joel is dead. Nobody's in the room. How do we know? If Alex is convincing with a great lawyer, he walks free. But what if there's video cameras everywhere? That's what changes things. Video cameras. Now we see Alex stand up over Joel. There's audio. I hate you. Boom. Right. That's why I'm, it goes I'm, to jail. That's I'm, blockchain 1.0 with okay. a video camera. Okay. Yeah, well, what if it's better? We know videos aren't everywhere, but what if blockchain's everywhere? Everywhere. Police brutality. Well, but you know these cameras well, already. Rodney King got beat, and he they still was acquitted the first time. That's because it was 1.0 blockchain. And so what they said was, you didn't see what happened before. That's how, that's how the whole, Donald, that was the big thing. They were saying the guy was on PCP before we turned the cameras off. He was throwing us all around, all this stuff. But imagine it was 24-7 a way to verify. That couldn't be corrupted. That any of those... For example, any of those policemen could submit anonymously, dude, we're all lying. So anonymously, lying. but verifiably. But verifiably, because yeah. other people have to, it's complicated, but the so hacking. Blockchain is everybody's uh, So the person, so the person, so one person cannot vote many times. For example. So, so one person can. 
Right. So, 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 again, so, can't so that's begin. everybody blocks. Yeah, the whole idea is that it's hard, hard to get. get. Your okay. neck was right. Right. Yeah. So hard to gain. Right. The whole concept is how to build right. systems yeah. that are hard okay. to gain. Okay, okay. I like it. Oh, oh, it's powerful. Like I said, just think of it as that analogy. It's a stupid analogy, but it kind of gets... But, it's, but it is also dumb and blunt. So when yes. you put smart contracts in place, they don't depend on somebody making a great circuit, just the hammer drops. So there's, yeah, there's a smart... Imagine justice that says, if it's proven that you murdered somebody, automatically you're dying. Yeah. You're just dead. So, so for example... And it doesn't make mistakes. So that would stop murder more. If you knew. Yeah. Now, well, mur murder, that's why I advise people against murdering. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'm in that direction even, too. Even with <laughs> primitive technology, there's about a 70% solve rate. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. A highest solve rate of any crime. Is Dr. Murder? David Buss wrote a book called The Murder Next Door. He is actually a world expert. On murder, he didn't write from his personal experience. I don't think right, right. That's, that's important to clarify. It's it's not, an, you don't have a lot of anecdotal right, experience, right? Right. So, on the first time or I murdered somebody, right, right, or the anecdotal experience, I'm going to keep under wraps for now. <laughs> I don't want to get subjected to blockchain. Do you think the world can ever go back to small groups? Because evolutionary mismatch is basically yeah. the problem with dating, love, marriage, business, depression, All, almost everything that humans don't like. Or this evolutionary mismatch? Yeah, yeah. no, it's a great question. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that there's some ways in which we do create a small group living in modern urban context. So the effective group that we live in is not the, the millions or thousands, but our neighborhood and whatever. But I agree. I mean, I think the mismatch is a huge problem. Mismatches. What do you think are the biggest mismatches? If you had to fix one. Uh, and Joel will probably relate to this, um, low activity level, okay? People don't get out and uh, expend energy, a lack, lack of exposure. You mean like sitting in chairs or at a desk yeah, all yeah, night? Yeah, they're not out. I mean, it, think of how our ancestors lived, okay? They hunted, they gathered. They were outdoors all the time, active. Exposure to sunlight, living in groups, people that they trusted, okay? Kin groups. Uh, as as well as uh, non-kin groups that they trusted, that over time you learned to rely on because they were trustworthy. This is an issue that came up in mm -hmm. your conference, mm -hmm. trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so uh, and, then, and then food uh, is another uh, mm -hmm. mismatch. You know, we're mm -hmm. eating shit that, you know, mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. uh, good for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Joel's been trying to correct that. So those are the four that I would identify. What about depression? Let's talk about that for a second. Do you think we're depressed? somewhat because we've created this world that makes us more likely to be depressed yeah yeah absolutely i think those four things just to start with so there there are depression psychotherapies now that try to uh, uh narrow the mismatches so increase activity level increase exposure to sunlight hang out with people that care about you and you care about uh but physically yeah physically not not on Facebook, right, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that's the that's the worst thing. And I'll give you one more comment. Yeah. So, so, and I hear this. Uh, there's this a perfect couple. Okay. It's like they have two the two successful academics. They have two beautiful kids, and they post all their happy pictures on Facebook of their two beautiful kids. They're getting divorced now, and everyone's shocked. And I kept trying to tell people. They're, what uh, they post on Facebook is not what their lives uh, are actually right. like. Uh, you know, it's bullshit. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and and lo and behold, it is. But people <laughs> think, oh, if only I could have that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and this is an issue that I think came up in the conference today, mm -hmm. in a slightly different context. And we do with this with mates. Okay. We have a small amount of information about potential mates, and we interpolate positive values in the blank spaces where we lack information. So I don't know how emotionally stable this person, how dependable, how whatever, but we, when we fall in love with them, we get attracted to them, we think they have positive values on all those characteristics. Mm. The more we get to know them, we realize, no, <laughs> yeah, they don't. Actually, they're much lower on this set of things. So we create this weird idealized um, 
set of uh, beliefs about what people are and what they should but be. But if there was in a smaller group, let's say you grew up in a smaller town, yeah. you knew everybody yeah, exactly. from childhood. Yeah, yeah, you it, knew that that was a dependable person from a good family, right. so you had better information. See, it all comes down to information. Yes. So you'd be right. more yeah, connected. Absolutely. And in the modern yeah. world, manipul mm -hmm. information gets manipulated. It's well, easy to manipulate. And, and, and I would yeah. suggest even that there's mm -hmm. another, another uh, element, and that is scale. Scale isn't everything, but scale scale is something. Scale does change dynamics of a group, of your ability to know. Of so you're saying when the group's too big, you so, just so, can't so you're saying, no, no. You're, you're, asking, you're asking David, you know, can we go back to small villages? All right, well, I would argue that's, that's probably not likely, okay? But I would go to the other end and say, do we... I'll, I'll posit we're not going to go back to small villages, but then I would ask, do we have to have a Los Angeles the size that Los Angeles is? Right. I mean, is, is there some is there some middle ground? Can, can we not have the art museums and the and the ball teams and whatever you know else debating societies and theater? Can, can we not have that with a city that's half the size of LA? If half the population moved to Oklahoma and Nebraska. I mean, I'm just... So do you think it would be I, I, better if Virginia, saying. for example, was mm -hmm. its own country? If its own country? Could it be? Let's say it was possible with technology. And you could self-regulate. There was a simple self-regulation. Would the world... That would be an example of smaller scale. America's yeah, yeah, 330 yeah. million people. North Carolina, when I lived there, was like 8 or 10. Virginia's mm -hmm. probably 10, 15 million. Yeah. I, I, I think if we took if we took 90% of what we've irrigated to the federal level... And went back to the state with that level of autonomous control. I think it would be very, very different. So now you're agreeing with what I said at the beginning. That my guess in a hundred years is you won't have the same borders. There won't be did, a big did, United did, States. Did you know this? That right now there are 33 states with active secession. Yeah, secession California programs. has one. Yeah, it was in the news. Yeah, I say we partition off San Francisco <laughs> in its own place. Texas will be first. Well, yeah, Texas already is. Well, 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 yeah, there's Texas and there's Austin. Those are two different things. That's right. Yeah. Texas is the San Francisco. I mean, Austin is San Francisco. Yeah. Texas yeah. Republic. Yeah. 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 People's Republic. Right. 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 Well, now, now you're back to kind of the whole James Dale Davidson thing, the sovereign individual. Have you read that book? I haven't. He, he was the founder of the National Taxpayers Union. Um, and he wrote a book. Oh, well, this has got some age on it now. Probably 25 years ago, it was one of the first big epiphany prophetic books that I read the sovereign individual and he talked about the rise and fall of, of the of the nation state yeah. and how the nation state is a very artificial human construct that tribalism is the historic norm yeah and, everything bad you and, know why everything bad in Germany was after Otto von Bismarck made Germany come together and then these guys went to war in 1914 World War I two thirds people were killed or maimed then 15 years there, Germany went after, and it was a nightmare. You know, when my grandma was, parents were young, there was no Germany. There was Pomerania, Prussia, uh, there was uh -huh. Bohe uh, Moravia. There was, my uh -huh, grandma's uh -huh. parents remember when there's no Germany. Yes. And before that, there was the Huns. Yeah, that was a different time. <laughs> what do you think? Should, question, another controversial thing. Would the world be... The, the income tax, as we know it, is new. Oh, wow. yeah. 150 years ago, there's yeah. no income tax. Should there be an income tax? Alex, do you have an opinion? Yes. Why? Because of externalities. So the fact that I make an income comes at the, at the little bit of cost that the environment and infrastructure around me provides to me. So right. I kind of... Back so like your bit. employees drive to work on a road, road. they destroy Therefore, the road I, a little bit. Yeah, so I pay in so that the roads are paved so that they the infrastructure exists for me to make that happen. Is there a better way to do that though than income tax? For example, tolls on the roads. So if your employees mm -hmm. don't drive, mm -hmm. why do you have to pay that? Mm -hmm. Or um, like the Amish, they don't use schools at all. Mm -hmm. because or they don't use Social Security, but they still have to pay it. And it they is, gladly do it, but it doesn't seem very fair. Because it's not just use of infrastructure. It's also things like, you know, taking care of orphan kids. 
So Which they're not balance. using the, that. That's that, not a big thing anymore. Just well, I mean, no, no, why not? Why not? There's not a lot of orphanages. <laughs> Alex <laughs> is back orphanage. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always so, so kids from kids with bad families okay. being taken care of. Orphanages are definitely on the decline. They they were <laughs> bigger a lot. Well, we have we have foster care. Foster, foster, foster care. We don't really have orphanages. Foster care. We have foster, foster, care. foster care. Okay. So that's not exactly use of infrastructure. It's investing in the future of humanity so that they can produce, they can have output in the future. But that's not the question. Should it be centralized in Washington, D.C.? As opposed to... If, what? San Francisco's city government no, is a lot the, the, more... The way, the way the founders envisioned it and the way that it worked up until 1914 was the reason for the U.S. census... <clears throat> was to get a census of the states because we are the United States of America. It's not a democracy, it's a republic. That's why I right. never use the word democracy. You should never vote for anybody that uses the word democracy. It's a republic. <laughs> and it's the United States of America. So the powers not specifically given to the federal government were given were, were, were by default given to the states. And, and so, so, so the states, saying, so the saying, states were allocated a federal, a federal amount per capita that could be collected. However, the state wanted to do it. If they wanted to do it with with property tax, if they wanted to do it with income tax, if they wanted to do it with capital gains tax, it didn't matter. You know, they could do it with a sales tax. Uh, yeah, do you yeah. think that yeah. that prisons worked? I don't know. I, I'm I'm not a big. Uh, I'm not convinced of the empirical evidence on rehabilitation. Mm. Really, for most people, mm -hmm. especially high on psychopathy. So you're saying there's nothing that'll fix people? Um, I, I think for for uh, I mean it depends on the nature of the crime. Uh, for high psychopaths um, who are violent, you do want to put them away. I think uh, to protect innocent victims. So you're saying it's not rehabilitation, it's, it's just it's removal. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, it's like an asylum. Uh, so yeah. Where do they but, get but the cane? Uh, I think a lot of the... Hmm? Where do they get it? Back or legs? Right? I mean, well, yeah, yeah, this, well, legs. this is where I would agree with Joel on the on the, the drug border, issue. A lot of people get, get locked up for, you know, long jail sentences for drug crimes. Yes. And, you know, and I, I think that's absurd. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, waste of taxpayers' money yeah. doesn't yeah. do any good. Well, look at the rapper that just Meek mm. Mill just got. So here, Meek Mill has broken parole three times. He's a rapper. And one of them was for popping a wheelie in on a motorcycle in Harlem. The second one is for breaking up a fight, which the police said was justified that he broke up, but he got involved in an altercation. And the third was turning himself into rehab for drug use. I say 25 it. years max, you know. No, he got put in, uh, yeah. but I'm yeah. saying he got put yeah. in like yeah. two and a half years wow. of prison. Yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. Which is just like, yeah. yeah. But he was on probation for like 10 years. Yeah, he was on probation for 10 years for something he did as a teenager. Yeah. And then the more you're on probation, anything you do right. violates the probation. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is, the thing that I've learned with corresponding with all these prisoners is how many hurdles we put in front of them when they do get out. It, it, yeah. If they serve our service and they get out, they can't. They can't have this job, that job. They can't live within a mile of a school. They can't. I mean, the the the. the or they the, can't be around individuals. Yeah, things. yeah, or children. Or, I mean, you, you name your thing. And, and, and my lands, we hear a lot about punishment, but can we hear about forgiveness once in a while? It's a recipe to fail. It, it is. It is. And, and and this poor guy. I mean, he he's he's got family in Georgia that's ready to bring him. He wants. To, he's ready to farm. He's read, you know, everything ten times. I mean, he's a real, real brain. He's. I mean, he was a U.S. Airways pilot. He's a sharp guy, and 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 he 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 can't he can't get to where he has family and support. But he's not unique. This is everybody. They just arbitrarily. He's not from North Carolina. I mean. He, he, that's not where he has people now. His his people are in Georgia. He needs to be in Georgia, where he's got you know family. Oh, and they and send him to North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. That's where he was originally arrested. But but that in seventeen years that whatever his friends community. I mean his marriage broke down. Uh, you know, there's nothing there. 
the, they, sh they should send you to wherever you have support. Right. I don't care where it is. So on, on that note, I'm going to send myself to bed. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I want to say I think it, most of it, us are going to follow. It, it's been <laughs> fantastic. Ty, yeah. thank you so much for organizing yes. this. Yeah, no, thank you guys. It's an amazing yeah. event. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It really is. People have time is undefeated. And it's two thirty six in the morning yeah. and everybody's slowly fading. Yeah, it's very Alex has was extremely talkative at the beginning. <laughs> slowly the number of words per minute has gone to about one per hour. <laughs> Orphanages and most of the last <laughs> two more hours. No Red Bull. I'm good. <laughs> you liking it that much? Thank you all. Thanks for Alex. being involved. <laughs>